Welcome to this session on MVC 1.0. So that's a new GSR that we uh, are working on. Um, my name is David Alabassé. Um, I work at Oracle. Um, that's my Twitter handle if you want to reach me. Um, so uh, I work at Oracle in the Java e, uh, group. So uh, technically, I'm based in Belgium, but I do report uh, to HQ in California. Since I work at Oracle, I have to show you this slide. It basically says that uh, everything which I will talk about, which is future, might change. So roadmaps, uh, API, and so on might change. So don't make any purchase decision based on what I will say today. Uh, the good news is that there is nothing to buy. So it's uh, an advice that is easy to follow. Um, this is my own personal statement. So um, I will talk about MVC. When I said that, most of the time, I'm, I really mean action-based MVC, GSR371. Um, now, GSR371 is a specification, so we also need an implementation. We have Ozark, which is the reference implementation. So I will maybe uh, sometimes mix those words, but when I say MVC, without context, it's really action-based MVC, action-oriented MVC. So the agenda for today, I will first give you uh, some context, so why I'm here. Uh, a guy, so someone working in the Java group, why I'm, why I'm here today to talk about uh, that new GSR. Then uh, I will explain what that GSR is about. Um, I have some demos, and then we'll have the conclusion, obviously. So, the context. So the current release of uh, Java, e, Java is Java e 7. Java e 7 was finalized in 2013, so nearly two years ago. So we did quite a lot of stuff on Java e 7. Uh, HTML5 support, we have added a new WebSocket API, and so on. So we did a lot of uh, things in Java E7, but that's not the topic for today. So at that time, um, since the specification was finalized, we had to think about what is coming next. So we had to think about Java E8. Uh, obviously, we are looking at the market. I mean, there are some trends that, is, that are emerging from the market, HTTP2, security, reactive programming, and so on. So we have good idea on things that might be uh, addressed in Java E8. Uh, but we had maybe a little bit uh, too much good ID. So what we did, uh, we did a community survey. So basically, we put all our ID in a survey, and we have asked the community to give feedback on that. The idea to do that is that once, w when you have good ID, sometimes it's good to challenge those good ID with the larger community. And also, our wish list for Java E8 was so long that if we would like to do everything which was on that list, we will, have, we will not have Java E8 for the next five, six seven years. That's too far ahead. So we did that community survey, and one of those questions was specifically about MVC. So we had this question, should Java E provide support for MVC alongside GSF? And 60% of the participants said yes. Now, I have to admit that the question was not uh, really well phrased, because GSF is MVC-based. But anyway, we had some clarification. So really, this is about uh, adding another solution next to GSF, which is really an MVC framework, but which would be action-based, while GSF is obviously component-based. Then we, have, we had this sub subsequent question. Uh, if so, if we, if we are going to do that, to what technology should we look at as a source of insp inspiration? And then, clearly, uh, we didn't have any clear answer. I mean, we had uh, Spring MVC, we had uh, Play, AngularJS, so a bunch of solutions. But nevertheless, it seems that that is something that we need to do in the platform. So I will skip that one. So this is basically the, the end result of the community survey. So I will not go in into the details. If you want to know more, just go on glassfish.org slash survey. But these are the results. So if you take. Uh, the second one, security simplification, and the fourth one, security interceptors, you combine those two together, security is a big deal for Java 8. And it, if you take the fifth one, I mean, if you combine the two, the, the two security-related uh, questions, that basically means that MVC becomes the fourth uh, most important feature that is being asked by the community uh, for Java 8. So it gives us some good idea on that that is something that needs to be addressed in the platform. Now we have to keep in mind that this is something that we have used to start the discussion on Java E8. Everything is still going through, to G, through the GCP. So we need to do MVC in the platform. But what is MVC? Uh, 
A very quick recap on MVC, model view uh, controller. So it's, widely used, it's a widely used pattern to design a user interface. Uh, we have three components in MVC, the model, the view, the controller. They all have a very well-defined set of responsibilities. The view is basically what the user will interact with. That's the user interface itself. Um, the models refers to the data that your application needs. Um, what the user is trying to buy, what is the name of the user, those kind of things. And then we have the controller. Um, the controller is really uh, the engines. So basically, we have the request coming through the, uh, to the controllers, to the controller. Um, the controller will, so the controller gets the, the input. It updates the model. So uh, this guy wants to buy that. Um, the controller will al al also trigger the view to render to itself. So the controller will say, okay. To the, we'll say to the view, OK, you need to render uh, yourself. And obviously, at some point in time, the, the view will need some data, data which are stored uh, in the model itself. So this is something that we are uh, using since many years to write user interface application. Now, when it comes to web application, there are two big styles of uh, MVC uh, framework. The first one is component-based. A good example is GSF. So um, in GSF, well, in component-based uh, framework, you have this notion of components. So the idea is that you will have components provided by a, a framework. You will assemble those components together. So you will basically define your user interface. So you will write a little bit of uh, some codes to, to attach to your component to specify what needs to be done, those kind of things. You will also write some, con some code for the model itself, validation, those kind of things. But clearly, what you will not do, you will not try the controller. The controller is provided in that approach by the framework, GSF, for example, or Tapestry, or Wicket. So as a developer, you will really focus on the model and on the view. So those type of framework are kind of easy because they provide uh, an abstraction. You don't really see that behind the scenes you have a HTTP request going on. So you don't really see those kind of low-level details. On the other hand, we have action-based uh, MVC framework. Good example, Struts, Spring MVC. So that approach is a bit different. So we still obviously have the controller. So the controller gets the request. And based on information in the request, the controller will basically tr trigger an action. And the, the actions will be to update the models, for example. The controller will also, will also ask the view to render itself. As a developer, this is your responsibility. You have to handle the model, the view, and the controller itself. So clearly, when it comes to writing code, in that approach, you have to write more codes. I mean, you don't have that abstraction that is provided by component-based approach. But it gives you more controls. You, you, have, you, are really see, you really see what is happening. So there are pros and cons. So as of today, in Java e, we have GSF, which is component-based. And uh, really, what I'm talking about today is about filling the gap for action-based MVC framework. So in Java E8, we would like to have an action-based MVC framework. So that is that new GSR that I will explain in a few minutes. Now, when it comes to the reason to use one approach or the others, I will not go into details because uh, clearly we have people that are, ver that, that are in love with GSF. We have people that hate GSF. Uh, the same is true for the, the other side of, uh, of, the, of the fence. Uh, just keep in mind, component-based, you have an abstraction, and most of the time, it's easier to, you, to write application because of that abstraction. On the other side, we have action-based. Uh, you don't have that abstraction, so you have to deal with lower-level details, such as the request, the response. You have to handle the, the JavaScript files, and so on. So that was for the context. So really, what I'm talking about here is that new MVC GSR. It's an action-based uh, framework that we would like to add to the platform. So GSR 371, action-based MVC uh, GSR for Java E. Why? Because uh, we want to provide choice. We have GSF, but we would like to provide a solution next to GSF. So this is not about replacing GSF. This is really about offering a different style of programming. Uh, this is something that we have been asked since quite a long time. So we, we think that it's time to address that gap. 
So the EGS started a few months ago. Uh, as of today, we already have an early draft of the specification. And we also have a first milestone of Ozark. Ozark is the open source reference implementation of that GSR. So as of today, you can check the specification. Obviously, it's still a draft. You can provide feedback, and you can uh, do tests using Ozark. That's what I will use for my demo. So what, what, what was the basic idea of uh, that specification? The idea was very simple. It's trying to glue together the different technology that we have in the platform to uh, provide an action-based MVC uh, framework. So clearly, we would like to avoid as much as possible to reinvent the wheel. So we first look in the platform what we have, and if that, feel, that fit the needs, we use that. So for the model, it's obvious we are using CDI. Um, we would like to have validation of the model, so it makes sense to use uh, for that bin validation. Persistence. The specification doesn't say anything about persistence, but it's obvious that if you would like to, pers to persist the model, it might make sense to use GPA. Now, for the view. So basically, what the user is interactive with. with. Uh, in the platform, as of today, we have Facelet and GSP. Um, so it makes sense to support those uh, out of the box. So the specification will say that you need to support Facelet and GSPs. But we would like to provide, to provide a choice. But again, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, so we will not invent a new templating uh, solution for that uh, framework. I mean, it's already a pretty crowded market. So uh, what we have, we'll, we'll have an extension mechanism that you can use to plug your own uh, templating solution. For the controller part, uh, we had this question. Should we invent something there? Because it was not as clear as, uh, as it was for the model or for the view. Or should we try to leverage something that we have in the platform. So after many discussion, many debate, it was decided to use JAXRS uh, for the controller part. So this is an MVC, again, an action-based MVC uh, controller. Um, so we borrow first uh, the add pass annotation from JAXRS. So you see that the pass of my uh, controller will be hello. Uh, we borrow the add get annotation from JAXRS. So we just introduced one annotation in this case, the add controller annotation, to specify that this uh, JAXRS resource method should be, in fact, a uh, controller method. And whenever someone is hitting that specific controller method, uh, it will be sent back to that uh, view, hello.xhtml. Hello so this is a facelet view in this case. Um, this is another, another example of a controller. So we can set the add controller annotation at the method level or at the class level. Um, we obviously, obviously ha still have the add get annotation. But in this case, we are uh, introducing a new annotation that is the add view annotation. So we can use that new annotation to specify which view the uh, controller needs to use. So in this case, whenever someone is hitting that hello controller method, it will be sent to the hello FTL, which is a free marker. Uh, view. Um, so, to send, so to, to specify which view should be used by a controller, we can use the add view annotation, or we can use the return type of the uh, of the method. So either we just return a string. In that case, that would be a reference to the view. So we could uh, return just hello.gsp. That would be uh, the reference to the hello.gsp view. Or we can return a viewable. A viewable is basically a way to provide more control uh, to, and specify, for example, how the view should be rendered. We can also return a JAXRS, uh, yes, a JAXRS response. So um, this is a, a more or less the same example. So, um, but in this case, we return a JAXRS response. So we have the control uh, of the, the response itself. So in this case, we, for example, set uh, the HTTP code that needs to be used. So this is a bad request. Um, the entity type needs to be uh, either void, um, a viewable, or just a string, so a, refer a reference to a view. And at the end, obviously, we need to build, to build uh, that response. So I think you will agree that uh, the controller part is, is very easy. Um, for the models, so basically the models, it's the data that your application needs to render uh, the user interface, to render the views. Um, we have two types of models. Uh, the first one is uh, just 
a hash map. And the second one is CDI based. And uh, the idea is that we would like you to use a CDI whenever uh, that is possible. So, for example, if you are using Festlet, use CDI. I mean, uh, Festlet supports CDI, so it makes sense to use CDI. That's a lot easier. But for an uh, external solution that uh, does not support uh, CDI, we have these uh, hash map uh, based models that allows you to basically plug any uh, Java based temp templating solution. So this is how I define a model. So this is basically a CDI bin as we have, well, since, uh, as we have today in Java E7. So uh, we haven't uh, added anything new uh, for the model part. Again, the idea is to leverage as much as we can what we already have today in the platform. Now, for the um, uh, HashMap-based approach, um, what we have to do, if we would like to use that approach, we need to inject that new models type. So we in basically inject the models, we put stuff on the map, and then from now on, we can use in our template uh, stuff that are in the map. I will show you that uh, in, uh, in demo, that's, um, that's easier to, to grasp. So I've talked about the controller, I've talked about uh, the model, then, obviously, there is the view. So the view is basically uh, uh, the technology that you will use to define the, the user interface. So this is a templating solution, the VDL, the view description language uh, that, you would like, that you would like to use. Um, so the MVC uh, GSR introduced the, uh, the notion of view engine. So a view engine is basically an engine that will render a view. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the specification uh, will mandate to support two view engines that are already there, so it's not a cost. That is GSP and Facelet. But we have this extension mechanism that you can use to, in, to add new view engines. I will show you that uh, in the demo. So this is an example of a view. So this one is a Facelet, uh, yeah, it's a Facelet view. So from the view, we obviously need the ability to get information from the model, so that's what we are doing here. So grating.messages is basically a CDI bins. It's a model that we have defined uh, in our controller. Uh, to do the reference, we are using expression language that is already in the platform. So again, we don't introduce something new for that. Uh, this is an, another type of view. In this case, this is a plain old Java server pages uh, view. We are also using expression language to reference uh, from the view uh, the models. So view engines. So basically, the, view, the responsibility of a view engine is to render the view. So it needs to know where to find the views and how to render them, and uh, also fetch information from the models to render that in the view. So we have this extension mechanism that you can use to plug external uh, templating engines in the framework. Um, so the specification will not say, OK, that will not say that you have to support free marker, velocity, and so on, because that would be uh, too much, um, that would be a dependency that, that would be too costly for the specification. So what we do, we have Ozark, which is the reference implementation, and we show you how it works in Ozark. So in Ozark, we obviously support Java server pages and Facelet, but we also show you how it works if you want to use free marker, velocity, time leaf, uh, moustache, handlebars, and I think we, we have people next to that. And you will see that it's, uh, it's fairly easy to add uh, other solutions. So if you want to do, let's say, Markdown, uh, that's something that can be easily done using that approach. So enough slides, uh, demos. Um, another disclaimer or statement, I'm using the first milestone of Ozark, so um, everything can break. So let's see. So what I have here, uh, let's see. So I have, uh, uh, this is not uh, the, so this is what I have here. So um, I have a simple um, application with two JAXRS endpoints. Uh, so let's first look at the code. So this is running in GlassFish uh, 4.1 with uh, Ozark. So uh, this is pure JAXRS code. So this is basically the bootstrap of the application. So nothing new there. And then we have this hello application. This is really where everything is happening. So right now, we, we have two JAXRS endpoints. Uh, the first one 
uh, its path is one, and the second one is its path is two. The second one, we, I'm using a parameter in addition to the path. Uh, the first one produces a, a text.html. Maybe I will increase the font a little bit for the guy on the back. And clearly, uh, well, um, I, I just return uh, a string. So if I hit that guy, something has been done. And if I hit that guy, something else has been done with David. David is basically uh, the parameter. Oops, sorry, the parameter that I'm passing here. So, this is two. Uh, oops, I just think I just killed. No. Yeah, I just killed my NetBeans. So let's start NetBeans. Sorry for that. It's too big on my screen. So uh, obviously, I need my application server as well. No, nope, I will not up update NetBeans right now. So I'm starting my application server that I started before to save some time. But since I kill it, Well, so in the meantime, maybe I can already uh, transfer and so the, the first method, which is just a Jackson endpoint point in, a, an, in an MVC controller. So remember, I said that you need to use the uh, add controller annotation. And yeah, that one is not known, so I need to fix the import. And uh, I also need to specify a view. So my view will be, in this case, let's say J prime. GSP. That one is not known, so uh, add in port, yes. I need to create uh, my view, my GSP in this case. So this is G prime, G prime, okay. So I think I have a lot of application uh, deployed in my uh, application server, so that's why it takes a lot of time. So J prime. So if I'm going to deploy that guy, so let's see, uh, this all says that. Uh, so what I will do here, I will return a void, and I won't do anything in, in the controller method. So if I uh, save that, my application should be deployed. So let's see. So if we go back here. So this is the first one. So let's see. Yeah, LOG Prime. This, so this is uh, obviously the view I want to have. Uh, this is my uh, GSP view. So I will uh, pimp it a little bit because it's a bit ugly. So I've just updated the GSP uh, styles. Well, it's not really nicer they deploy it yeah okay i don't know what's going on there but um so let's say so this is my gsp page so now i want to obviously use the information coming from a model in my gsp uh, in my view so what i need to do obviously i need to um to have a models um so inject i will use uh, that new models uh, hash maps models uh, private models why uh, yeah, the import now i need to put stuff in my model obviously so models dot dot Put, uh, let's call that uh, info and let's uh, 
I'll just put some random stuff. System, uh, system, I said. Current time, milliseconds. So now I can use in my uh, views um, what I, the stuff I put in the model. So that means that if I do something like that, uh, was it time? No. No, it was info. And it was this one. Exception. So I have something wrong there. Context J prime. That's the beauty of doing demo. Uh, pass one. So get produce, I can remove that one, the path controller view, that's okay. Yeah, I, something's going really wrong, so let's restart Glassfish, sorry for that. So I'm sorry, but something is completely broken. Nope. So I will switch to, to that guy. Uh, to explain, we don't need that one. So I need the view. Well, no. I will use one of the viewer I already have, which is, let's say, a test.ftl. I just did that demo 10 minutes ago, and it was working just fine. Get that controller on the well. Th that should work because I have the get, I have the controller, I have the at pass, and I'm returning a view. So J prime. What? Sorry. Yeah, but. Uh, um, no, I'm not sure which one is so properties. So that's the. Come there, message from the works. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is. So what? The thing is that it didn't want to load my my. Uh, so, so what I can do, but. Uh, uh, the application path is demo, and the context is uh, J prime. Just let, yeah, or so that should. Ah, no, where is my mouse now? Yeah. Maybe I, I, well, I hope I know what is wrong.
Okay. It was a, it, it's a bug in my uh, Glassfish milestone build. Uh, so, so what I have here, so um, I have a controller method. I set the view in this case. In this case, this is a FTL file, which is FTL, that's a free marker um, a template. And I have this thing here, which is using the FreeMarker uh, condition. So if age is not defined, uh, well, if age is defined, I, 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 um, I mention the age, I display the age, and if it's not, it should say age in, is undefined. So this is obviously coming from the model. So this is what we have here. here. So that means that if I go back to my application, and if I had uh, age uh, to my models, so uh, put... Um, Sorry. Age, and right now I'm 30 years old. So if I save that, it will be uh, deployed. So now I've put my age in, in the model. So if I go back uh, there, if I reload that page, it's still undefined. So was it really age that I was using? Uh, yes, age. Uh, that is really weird. What? Sorry? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not using parameter ID. Uh, so uh, what I'm doing here, I'm just putting the age in there, so it should it should it should it should work. So, uh, but it's still undefined. So I'm really not lucky today. Uh, well, let's go back to that one. Then. So view uh, J prime, and what I mean. So instead of using that, I will use uh, uh, this the CDI approach. So I have a CDI bin that I will use to define my model. So this is a book. So uh, let's say that I want uh, to set the title of the book. Uh, I'm out of luck. So this is the title of the book I will write. And if I want to use that in my uh, GSP file, so in my model, so what I need to do, basically, so it's a book uh, and title. book. So if I run that one, is it, is it deployed? Yeah. So this is my GSP with uh, the title of my book. So this is basically how I can use uh, from uh, CDI-capable uh, views engines, uh, GSP, Facelet, maybe others. Uh, I can use models just uh, by using CDI. So this is what I've done here. So I can do many other stuff, but I, I'm not really feeling like doing that today. <laughs> so uh, for example, what we say here, so I, say, I set a view, but what I, so this is basically where the controller needs to send the, the user. But what, what I can do, I can also specify that. So I can return a reference to a view. So in this case, J prime, well, let's do it with that one. That would be easier. So in this case, uh, string, uh, and we would like to send the user to the uh, J prime GSP. But let's say that uh, we want to we want to uh, send the user to an error page as well. So in this case, so this is basically where the user will be sent by default if nothing, if nothing is specified. But in this case, uh, the user will be sent to the error GSP. So this one should take precedence over the other ones. So if I t create my new uh, uh, view, which is error.gsp, So this should be the error page and the default, well, not the default page. 
So if I go back to the code, so let's see. So by default, the user will be sent to J prime, but since I'm returning that one, uh, the user should be sent to error.gsp, so to that specific view. So let's see. Uh, still, <laughs> yeah, as I told you. Uh, yeah, it, I, I didn't save, so, it, so my application wasn't deployed. So there, let's see. Yeah, OK, error page. So th this works. But I think I will stop the demo here because I'm not really in the mood to do any more demo. But you see, I mean, well, obviously, this is an early milestone of uh, Ozark. But w once you, you know how it works, I mean, you define the view either using annotation or you return a reference to a view or a viewable or a JAX response that gives you the ability to uh, control how the view is rendered, set the code, and so on. You have the ability to fetch the models uh, from the view using EL, uh, we can use CDI or uh, just a plain uh, hash maps. Um, and basically, this is pure JAXRS code. We, we haven't really uh, changed the spirit of JAXRS. We have just enhanced it, enhanced it to, make sure, to make sure that it works uh, there. So I apologize for all those hiccups in the demos. Uh, most of the time, they work uh, more nicely. So some, some other uh, remarks. So this is a JAXRS application. So that means that we bootstrap the application as we do in JAXRS. I mean, we, are, we have seen uh, in my demo, the first class that I've shown you is basically a JAXRS bootstrap. Uh, so nothing uh, new there. Um, for validation, we are using bin validation. Um, as we have in JAXRS, I mean, validation can fail. So we have um, the ability to define uh, 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 exception mapping providers. So that will allow you basically to deal with uh, exceptions that are raised uh, in your code. Um, again, JAXRS, uh, so we are using the add produce uh, annotation. If you don't specify anything, the produce type is uh, text, dot, uh, text slash HTML, but you can override that and use uh, anything. I mean, uh, behind the scenes, it's just JAXRS. Um, so we can imagine to have non-HTML-based view. I mean, if you have use case for that, uh, it, it, it will work. Behind the scenes, uh, we are using CDI event. I mean, uh, the MVC specification tells how to use CDI events, and it's, it's using CDI events for its internal plugging. So that means that you have the ability to see what's happening. For example, when a view engine is selected by uh, the implementation that you are using, uh, you just need to observe that specific uh, event using CDI, and you can do whatever you want to do. Um, so this is basically uh, the MVC framework as it is today. Uh, it's fairly simple. I mean, not a lot of uh, features, uh, but the idea is really to provide a, a different way of programming a UI. Uh, so that's something that you would use on top of Java EE. Something that we are looking at, but nothing uh, has been done yet. We just have a prototype. It's around the tooling. Tooling might also help uh, to in those cases. So we have a prototype of uh, working on NetBeans, so we'll see how that evolves uh, over time. So conclusion, don't do any live demo in a presentation. So uh, doing MVC now is not a bad idea because we are using what we already have today in the platform. So we have just introduced two annotations, the add control annotation and the add view. And if you want, you don't have to use the add view annotation. So you just need to use the add control annotation. So it's a fairly non-intrusive uh, specification. We try to leverage as much as we have in the platform. Now, uh, since it's, it will be part of Java 8, uh, we might want to do more over time. Uh, one thing that is coming to mind, in Java 8, we will have Servlet 4. Servlet 4 will support HTTP 2. HTTP 2 has this new server push capability that allows the backend to push uh, proactively resources in the cache of the client. That will be exposed to, through the Servlet API. So that's something that we might want to use uh, in the context of the MVC framework. Who knows? And also, the, so that MVC framework uh, also gives you some ability to, to leverage your GSP investments. I mean, a lot of people are uh, uh, laughing when we talk about GSP. But uh, so who's, who's using GSP today? OK, there are, there are a few hands, but I'm sure that there are more people that are using GSPs. So it gives you a good excuse to continue to use GSPs. And at the end of the day, it's just about providing more choice. 
So we have GSF, we will have this, this, we will have this new uh, MVC framework, and maybe you will use something else, Angular, or who, who knows. So it's just about choice. So this will be part of Java 8. So, so far for Java 8, we have 11 spe uh, specifications that has been started. Uh, the MVC, so GSR 371, is the first one that is in early, in early draft. So um, this is the one which is the most advanced. When it comes uh, for roadmap for Java 8, uh, we said at the beginning Q3 2016, uh, my advice, don't trust any roadmap. Things can change. So we'll see. I mean, uh, some MVC, JSONP, uh, CDI2, they have made a lot of progress, but some other uh, EG uh, still, to, still need to, to do work. So uh, remember the first slide. Uh, this is future statements. So this, this is forward-looking, so this can change. Now, you can help us uh, to, uh, to define what G Java E8 is and also be involved in MVC. So you can join the AG. So you can join the GCP and participate in the expert group. Now, I have to say that being involved in a GCP EG takes a lot of time. So we all also have this Adopt a GSR program where we basically ask user group to adopt a GSR. So you take a GSR, you try to understand it, you write about it, so you write samples, you try to break it, you provide feedback. We still have plenty of time to fix things, so we would like to have that feedback before we go final. Uh, maybe there are some of you things that we, we have missed. So please, uh, if you have uh, the ability, be involved and participate in the Adopt a GSR. So a uh, few resources, the specification itself, uh, the, all the discussions that are happening in the EG are open to the public, so you can see exactly what is being discussed. So uh, basically everything which is discussed on the EG is mirrored on the user mailing list, so you can not only see, but you can also uh, send remarks, uh, ask questions, and so on. Ozark is the open source reference implementation. It's open source. It's mirrored on GitHub, so you can get the source and you can play with it. And finally, uh, we have the Aquarium blog. So that's a blog that my Reza, my colleague, and myself maintain to push news around uh, Java, e, Java on the server. So Java E, MVC, Java E8, and so on. So with that, that's the right one. So, uh, so yesterday I was in Madrid, and I, I had a, a similar presentation, but on Java 8, and I put a thank you in Catalan, which was the thing to not do in Madrid. So luckily I got it right. <laughs> I got it right this time. So if you have any question, please, or remarks. Yes, sir. Yes, you. Uh, actually, CDI 2.0 has no, uh, it could be used with standard edition also, not only with enterprise edition. And the same is also true for JAXRS. RS. Uh, it could be used as endpoint, which is not uh, uh, de dependent on Java E. Yeah. Uh, do you plan to make MVC also accessible as standard edition technology, not only as enterprise edition technology. Okay, so the question is about the fact that we have some API in the platform. Uh, you mentioned CDI, uh, you mentioned Jax 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 RS. RS. Uh, we also have GPA, we have the batch API that can be used on uh, Java IC. Mm -hmm. uh, as of today, we don't plan, I mean, you can use them outside of Java E, but we don't plan to provide this, uh, I would say, a glue that is not uh, the Java E container to use those API together. I mean, you can do it together. You can do it today, but we don't provide a framework that allows you to easily use them. I mean, you have CDI, so it's already uh, a technology that can be used to use those, those technologies together. It could be much lighter and maybe uh, easier to use for some type of applications, lightweight applications. Yeah, what we have in the platform, that's the web profile. So the web profile is a subset of the platform. So the web profile, uh, the, MVC will, uh, the MVC framework will likely be in the web profile. JAXRS is already in the web profile. So uh, that's our answer today. And I mean, to modularize more the platform, we basically have to wait uh, uh, to get the modularity that will be part of Java SE. Once it's there, we'll see uh, what it means to Java E. But clearly, this is, uh, this is not for Java E8. Yes. Thank you very much.
uh, I think there is a question at the back. Hello. Uh, will there any there, will there be any uh, interceptors, automatic caching of resources, and other goodies like, for example, Spring MVC provides, or it will be just plain? Uh, can, so, interceptor for what? Can you repeat? Well, well you want to have a code that uh, executes on every request, regardless of the endpoint, and you intercept that request and do something there, like like Spring MVC interceptors, for example. So basically, I have some kind of generic uh, pass. Uh, uh, that's a good question. Uh, as of today, in the specification, I don't think this is already uh, addressed. But I, I would have to check. But that's the, that's the kind of feedback uh, we, we, we need to, well, we want. So uh, I cannot answer that one. I will check. But uh, I'm pretty sure since it's based on Jack uh, it should be it will be possible w once the specification is final. Mm -hmm. and, and what about, for example, automatic caching of uh, resources like CSS? Authentication of resources, that's something that m might be addressed in another GSR, so GSR 375, uh, which is the security GSR for Java E. So it's a GSR that is dealing with different uh, security related questions. And JAXRS uh, authentication is being discussed there, I think. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I want to ask, is it possible to, to be return some kind of uh, JSON or, or other type of uh, response? E yes, returning JSON, you can return JSON. I mean, you can return uh, anything. So the view, well, the, so the, the thing is that you, you, you give a reference to a view engine, and the view engine needs to, needs to know what to do with that. So let's say that you have a JSON-capable view engine. Why not? But you can also mix and match. This is JAXRS code. So if you put an add controller annotation on your method, this becomes an MVC controller. But you can also, you can also have next to that pure JAXRS endpoint within the same application. I mean, is it possible to send a JAX request from the view and to, and to receive some other, uh, some kind of uh, meaningful uh, response? Not I, only I, I, I didn't GSPF. get it. So, so is it possible to send a what from the view? No, a, a, a JAX response, a uh, uh, request, sorry. Uh, from the view, uh, yes. that yeah, but that w that will not be part of the specification. The thing is that this is uh, what this MVC uh, GSR is about. You have more; it's it's lower level, so you have more uh, control on what w what you can do. Something that you don't necessarily have with uh, with uh, GSF. So those kind of scenario, I think, might be possible. Okay, thank you. But yeah, th those kind of things, uh, those are good things to test right now. I mean, because uh, maybe there are scenarios that we haven't thought of. And I don't say that the 1.0 will address all the needs, but uh, it's a good idea to have at least uh, an overview of what is needed on the market. Is there any more questions, remarks? If not, I will not try to pronounce that. I will just say thank you.